Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's devotional. I will be reading from Mark chapter 15, verses 21 through 41 out of the English Standard Version, if you'd like to follow along. And they compelled a passerby, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. And they brought him to the place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him and divided his garments among them, casting lots for them to decide what each should take. And it was the third hour when they crucified him. And the inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. And with him they crucified two robbers, one on his right and one on his left. And those who passed by derided him, wagging their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself and come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes mocked him to one another, saying, Ha! He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also reviled him. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lima sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he's calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, truly, this man was the son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance, among whom were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James the Younger and of Joses and Salome. When he was in Galilee, they followed him and ministered to him. And there were also many other women who came up with him to Jerusalem. Thus ends the reading of God's word. A few observations to make about the passage that we just read. What a gruesome and awful death for the one who just days earlier was heralded as the Messiah with shouts of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. No one was expecting him to be hanging on a Roman cross just days later like a Roman common criminal, especially Jesus' disciples who fled in fear and even denied knowing him. Even today, there are some people who wonder at Jesus' crucifixion, thinking Jesus was merely a good man who met a tragic end, or others who even think he was a good prophet, so good that God wouldn't have allowed him to die like this, and so they don't even believe Jesus was crucified at all. And yet, as we read through the things that Jesus said and did leading up to his death, it's striking how rather than being accidental, Jesus' death, even the way in which he died, was actually very intentional. Now, why do I say that? Well, number one, Jesus fulfilled Old Testament prophecy. Not just one prophecy or two, but many. Just here in our passage alone, Psalm 22 gives us many examples. Listen as I read and see if it doesn't sound familiar. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me from the words of my groaning? Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. They have pierced my hands and feet. They divide my garments among them. And for my clothing, they cast lots. So through Old Testament prophecy, we see the scene of Jesus' crucifixion intentionally playing out just as it was foretold. 
A second place we see intentionality is in Jesus choosing to be betrayed. Luke 22 records that Jesus, when he was serving the Passover meal with his disciples, knew that Judas would betray him and even identified him and sent him out. And yet Luke tells us that after supper, Jesus and his disciples went as usual to the mountain of olives. Why would Jesus go to the very place he usually went, the place where Judas would be sure to find him and betray him, leading him to the cross? Well, there are other ways that Jesus demonstrates intentionality, but the third way that I want to emphasize today that's directly seen in our passage is the manner of his death. How does that demonstrate Jesus's intentionality? I mean, he died by crucifixion, didn't he? It doesn't seem like he had a choice on how he died. But let's stop and consider a few things. Before being crucified, Jesus said to his disciples, as recorded in John 10, 18, no one takes my life away from me, but I lay it down of my own free will. Jesus knew he was going to lay his life down and he said no one would take it from him, not even Roman soldiers. The Roman guard who watched the events up close concluded from the way that Jesus breathed his last, it said, that Jesus was the Son of God. What was it about the way Jesus breathed his last that made the soldier attribute it deity to Jesus? Well, as I read through the text, I was struck by something. Mark says that Jesus shouted from the cross with a loud cry, twice. First, Mark describes Jesus calling out with a loud voice, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Which is followed by the statement, then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. Why is it significant that Jesus shouted? Well, from what we know of crucifixion, it ultimately kills by asphyxiation, which is a fancy way of saying suffocation, lack of oxygen. When someone is suffocating, they can hardly get a word out, let alone shout loud enough for everyone to hear them. And yet Jesus, the moment before he takes his last breath, when he should have been too weak to utter any words at all, shouts. What does he shout? Luke and John give us more details. Jesus shouts, it is finished. Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. Jesus was not too weak to shout before he took his final breath because Jesus' life wasn't taken from him. The Roman guard saw what Mark recorded for us, that Jesus gave up his life on purpose. And God confirms Jesus' intentionality with other miraculous events like the sky turning dark in the middle of the day and the divine tearing of the curtain in the temple from top to bottom a curtain that was at least 30 feet tall and made of material thick enough that it couldn't be seen through as it separated man from the Holy of Holies. A curtain that symbolized the separation between God and man because of man's sin and God's holiness. And now that curtain is torn in two from top to bottom at the exact moment that Jesus, our sin bearer, gives up his life for the sins of the world, making a way for us to be reconciled to God. No, Jesus' life was not a tragic, Jesus' death was not a tragic accident, and it wasn't something he tried to avoid. Jesus went to the cross on purpose, and it was a demonstration of the most intentional love ever shown. A love we cannot earn because it was given freely, but a love that we are called to imitate. The intentionality of the cross is good news for us, my friends. Jesus doesn't whisper it in one corner of the world for only a select few to hear. He shouts it to us from the cross. It is finished. Your sins have been paid for by my perfect sacrifice. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever should believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. <laughs>